In this video, we're going to talk about the light dependent reactions. Now, if you remember from topic two, when we talked about photosynthesis the first time, we mentioned that photosynthesis is this process of convert of producing sugars from light energy, water and CO2. Now, in the in this video, we're going to talk about the first half of that process of photosynthesis, namely the light dependent reaction. I do recommend that you go back to topic two and just make sure that you're comfortable with the overview of photosynthesis before going into the detailed mechanisms of the light dependent reactions, because it might confuse you otherwise. So the light dependent reactions take place in the intermembrane space of thylakoids. That's the first thing you need to know. Now, in order to understand what that is, you first have to zoom out a little bit. So we know that photosynthesis happens in plant cells, right? And these plant cells is, is these like quadratic structures here. And more specifically, it happens inside the chloroplasts of plant cells. And these are the organelles, right? Those like little units that we find inside of the of plant cells. If we then zoom into what a chloroplast look like, it looks something like this, where you have these two membranes, an intermembrane space, then these uh, things called thylakoids, right, which are stacked together in what we call a, a granum, and then this is connected to more grana using using a lamella. Okay, but we're going to go into the the detailed like structure of chloroplasts in another video. For now, I just want to emphasize that we're looking at the thylakoid, right? So the one individual thylakoid is part of the chloroplast. And more specifically, it's happening in the intermembrane space of a thylakoid. So if I were to draw out a thylakoid like this, right? There's, there's a thylakoid, which is made up of, of, of membranes, right? That, so like this is phospholipids all the way up here. Yeah. And then we have the intermembrane space. So I'm going to write intermembrane space. And that's happening in here. And then out here, we have the stroma, right? And the stroma is kind of the almost a cytoplasm of the chloroplast. That's kind of how you can think of it. Okay. So we're talking about the intermembrane space within the thylakoid. All right. So what actually happens in these light dependent reactions? Well, it's split into a couple of stages. And the first of these stages is when light will excite electrons. So what happens is that these chlorophyll molecules, right, which are the things that are responsible for absorbing light energy, as you'll probably remember from topic two, these chlorophyll molecules are clustered. They're clustered in these little compartments of the thylakoid membrane. Okay, so remember when the thylakoid membrane it, which is what we call a photosystem. So a photosystem is where we have a bunch of chlorophyll molecules, right? And those are the things that are responsible for absorbing light energy. So I'm just calling them in here just so that we're sure which what we're talking about. So what happens? The first thing that happens in light dependent reactions is that these chlorophyll molecules will absorb light energy. Okay, so this red line is light energy. Now what happens when they absorb this light energy? The energy kind of gets passed around between the chlorophyll molecules until eventually one of the chlorophyll molecules has an electron which is excited. OK, and what it means to have an electron excited is that if you imagine an energy, if you imagine that an electron has a certain amount of energy, right, when you give it energy, it's going to get more energy. That That's pretty obvious. Right. But what that means is like it's equivalent to taking to taking someone at the bottom of a mountain and then transporting them with a helicopter all the way up to the top. The people at the top of the mountain now have more energy, right? They're excited. Okay. And the electrons behave in the same way. So light energy is used to excite electrons in chlorophyll. Okay. So that's the first syllabus point. The absorption of light by photosystems generates excited electrons. These electrons are then going to pass onto what we call an electron carrier. Okay. Because they're excited. So this is an electron carrier. An electron carrier is just something, well, it kind of says in the name, right? It's something that can carry electrons. And from here, the electrons are going to get passed down an electron transport chain. Okay. They're going to get passed from one electron carrier to the next electron carrier. So this process of transferring is probably quite similar to what we did in the electron transport chain in the mitochondria, right? And that's because this is basically the same principle. So the electrons are passed from photosystem two. Now I know this is counterintuitive, but we it's passed from photosystem two to photosystem one using these electron carriers. 
The reason why we call it Photosystem 2 is because it was discovered second, okay? So they first discovered Photosystem 1 and then Photosystem 2. That's why it's called Photosystem 2. But so electrons, excited electrons, are passed to an electron carrier, then another, and then another, until eventually the electrons get passed to Photosystem 1, okay? So that's kind of that's kind of the first half of this process. Now we mentioned that in mitochondria, the purpose of the electron transport chain, sorry, let's just move this over a little bit just because we need some space. So we'll just move that over. And um, the purpose of the of the electron transport chain was to do one thing, and that was to pump protons or hydrogens that have lost an electron, right? To pump these in the mitochondria, it happened into the intermembrane space. And in um, chloroplast, it's also going to happen. It's going to happen into the thylakoid space, the intermembrane space, also known as the thylakoid space. Okay. Now, this is important because what you're doing is that you're generating a high concentration of H+. Okay. And that will be important later on. Okay. So, We've excited electrons in chlorophyll. These excited electrons get passed onto an electron carrier. This then gets passed to the next electron carrier and the next and the next until eventually you reach photosystem one. And then in photosystem one, we're then going to have some more reactions that we're going to talk about at the in two, two slides time. But for now, just understand that the purpose is to generate a high proton gradient, high proton gradient. Awesome. So that's kind of the first step of the photosynthetic reactions. All right. Now, we said that when a light strikes this photosystem, it's going to be exciting electrons, right? So chlorophyll is going to lose electrons, right? Now, at some point, these chlorophyll molecules will run out unless they are replaced, okay? And the way that we replace these, um, these electrons is quite important. So over here, inside the intermembrane space or in the thylakoid space, we'll write out both words because the mark scheme likes both, okay? The thylakoid space, you have a molecule of water, H2O. And when this uh, photosystem uh, loses its electrons, it kind of becomes hungry for more electrons. And so what it does is that it causes water to be split into H plus electrons and oxygen. Okay, now if you take chemistry, you'll know that you have to balance this reaction, right? So you, we, we'll just do that really quickly, okay? Um, but these electrons don't stay in the thylakoid space. Instead, they pass on to, the, to the, those that were lost in the chlorophyll molecule. And um, by the way, you don't have to be able to balance this reaction. You just have to know that water is split to produce H plus water and then transfer the electrons to, um, to this photosystem, okay? So this process is called photolysis. And the definition of photolysis that you should give on an exam is that it is the splitting of water using a water splitting enzyme, a water splitting enzyme in the presence of light. Okay. So light energy will cause this water molecule to be split by a water splitting enzyme. And that is going to replenish the electrons in the photosystem too. What it also does is that it supplies some protons to this thylakoid membrane space, right? Which is great because that's just going to contribute to this proton gradient that we're trying to form, right? So the, the protons are getting moved in from the, from the stroma. That's great. And then we're also generating some protons in the thylakoid membrane space from the splitting of water. And then I want to point out that we also produce oxygen, right? So if you remember, when we talk about photosynthesis, we say that it's the production of carbon compounds, right? So glucose and oxygen from CO2 and from water. Now, this should hopefully illustrate half of that process, right? Because we're taking water, which was one of the reactants, and we're converting it into oxygen. Now, oxygen is actually not going to be, going to be involved in the rest of photosynthesis. It is now a waste product. So it's a waste product of photosynthesis. I'm going to write waste P. Okay, so that's the, that's the second part of um, the light dependent reactions. We have excited electrons, electron transport chain, and then we have some photolysis of water. Finally, the third part of 
the light dependent reactions is that we want to form molecules of NADPH and ATP. Okay, so the light dependent reactions, they have the main, their main purpose is to produce this NADPH and ATP. Okay, that is the main like goal of the light dependent reactions. And so how does this happen? Well, we said, first of all, how do we make NADPH? So NADPH is one of those electron carriers, right, that has been reduced. So it is formed when NADP is given some electrons, when NADP is reduced. So when the electrons pass down this electron transport chain, right, which is what generates that proton gradient, then finally they're going to get passed onto the chlorophyll molecules that you find in photosystem one, which is similar to photosystem two, it's just that it has a different name, okay? And these electrons in here can again be excited. So light energy, light energy is going to, I don't know how clearly you can see that, let me do it in red. So light energy is going to be used to excite these electrons again, okay? And if you excite these electrons, they're going to go up in energy levels, right? They're gonna go from a, an unexcited state to, a, to an excited state. Why is this useful? Well, when electrons are excited in photosystem one, they will be passed onto NADP. So electrons are passed from the photosystem onto NADP and it will convert it into NADPH, okay? Because the, the NADP is also gonna accept some, some H plus from the, from the solution out here, okay? So in that way, it forms NADPH, a reduced electron carrier. So that's half of the, the goal of, of the light dependent reaction. And then we also wanna make some ATP. Now we've already discussed a really effective way to make ATP in uh, cell respiration. And that process was called chemiosmosis. Now, we are going to do the same thing in the light dependent reactions. So here, we are going to use that proton gradient that we generated from the, from the pumping of the protons from the stroma into the, into the thylakoid space, right? And then we're going to allow for these protons to flow down their concentration gradient through ATP synthase, right? The same protein that we found in cell respiration. And then by flowing through this protein, AT, ADP is going to be converted into ATP, right? So it's the same process as before. The only difference is that we uh, give this a slightly different name in that this is photophosphorylation. Photophosphorylation. Now, why is it photophosphorylation? Well, phosphorylation, because we're adding a phosphate group to this ADP molecule, and photo, because it relies on light energy, okay? So light energy was used to excite these photosystems, in pho these uh, photosystem one and photosystem two, for that matter, and therefore the phosphorylation is based on, on oxygen, okay? So if we read the syllabus statement, ATP synthase in thylakoids generates ATP using the proton gradient, that's what we just mentioned here, Excited electrons from photosystem one are used to reduce NADP. We said that, right? That light energy will, will excite these electrons and they will pass onto the NADP. And this reduced NADP and ATP are produced in the light independent, sorry, the light dependent reaction. So that's kind of summarizing what we already said. So that is basically the final product of the light dependent reactions. We have NADPH, reduced NADP, and some ATP. And it's gonna be obvious why we need to make this in the following videos. But for now, let's talk about the key points that we took from this video. So the light dependent reactions occur in the thylakoid intermembrane space, also known as just the thylakoid space. So you can replace those two. Um, light will excite chlorophyll electrons to generate a proton gradient as the electrons are passed from photosystem two to photosystem one. The photolysis of water, right, that is just the process of splitting water, um, replaces the lost electrons in photosystem two, and it makes some oxygen, which is a waste product. Um, we generate a proton gradient, and we use that to make some ATP, right, photophosphorylation. And electrons in photosystem one are again excited by light to reduce NADP, and the ATP and NADPH are the final products of the light-dependent reactions. So I hope that video makes sense. In the next video, we're going to talk about the light independent reactions.